What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more video game music. And I'm going to attempt to do this as concisely as possible, because it's a video game I could talk about endlessly. Uh, we're talking Star Control 2, perhaps not the best-known game that is often on, you know, best games of all time lists, which it frequently is. Uh, but again, it may be a bit more obscure. Obviously, the second installment in the Star Control series, it was made by Fred Ford and Paul Reich, I believe the third. Um, and yeah, I came across this game because my brother got a 3DO. I was born in 80, so in the early 90s. This game came out in 92. Um, I was like 11, you know, maybe almost 12, because my birthday's in December. Anyway, uh, eventually my brother got this game, Star Control 2, and I was already into space. You know, I knew who Carl Sagan was. I hadn't watched, like, the full Cosmos. That wouldn't happen until a little bit later. But I was already into space and thinking about planetary, uh, planetary exploration. Um, and so this game, it's a futuristic space drama with, you know, you you serve as the, you know, sole, like, remaining independent captain of Earth, because Earth is, you know, in the end of the first game, um, it's put under lockdown by this villainous species that is, you know, predatory, and they go around subverting other species to their will. So in the second game, you're working to, like, free Earth, and ultimately you have to, like, make deals with other species and try to get allies and, like, different types of ships that you can use in, like, combat sequences. Um, there's a lot of comedy in the game. You're working on a timeline that's, like, running in real time, and ultimately there's certain things you can do which extend that timeline a little bit, but the two major bad species in the galaxy are, like, fighting a civil war, and once that civil war is over and one side wins, they start killing everybody in the galaxy because their doctrine is the like eternal doctrine. Like if you kill everybody, then no one can kill you. It's essentially the you know the irony of the like perpetual war for perpetual peace. Um, but yeah, there's so much inter interesting stuff in the game. The dialogue is hilarious, and you explore all these different planets and moons. And you know, in some cases, it's really dangerous to land on it, but you can still try to do it, and you can lose your lander and the crew on it, and it's. You know, there's, there's all sorts of stuff going on, and indeed, anyone who knows the Mass Effect trilogy, this game was essentially Mass Effect 20 years before Mass Effect. It was, um, I don't know exactly when the first Mass Effect, probably late aughties, um, so maybe not quite 20 years. But uh, again, I'd like, I think the Mass Effect people have uh, explicitly cited Star Control 2 as one of the influences uh, when they were making that game, so or those games. Anyway, um, the music is amazing, and not only is the music amazing, but it's so amazing that there's a group of, I think, mostly Scandinavian electronic producers who in the late aughties, around that time, uh, maybe mid aughties, um, one of the like species that you hear about in the game that they don't exist anymore and they may have found a way to travel between galaxies is like, you know, infeasible or technologically challenging as that would be. They're called the precursors, so these producers called themselves the Precursors, and they did all these remixes to tracks in the soundtrack. And I have a lot of the Precursor tracks, too. So over a period of time, we'll go through everything. We'll go through you know the soundtrack from the actual game, as well as the Precursor remixes, a couple of which are just incredibly good. Um, in any case, I wanted to start with a tune that when I first played this as a, you know, like 12 year old back in the day, I don't know if it came out in 92, it probably didn't, um, or it did come out in 92, I don't know if I played it in 92, it probably was like a little bit later than that. But, uh, yeah, when I played it, it's a tune that stood out right away. Like, there's all sorts of ambient space music when you're going within a star system and when you're, you know, um, searching different planets and moons, and one of the, like, searching a planet or moon tracks um, I don't know the name of it. There's like a list of like um, in in orbit tracks, like a, in orbit one through five, like Roman numerals. But this isn't one of them. But it's like the first one you hear in the game when you go to the um, Earth's moon, Luna. So essentially, this is the you know I think of this as like the Luna like sound, um, not soundtrack, but the Luna like track. Because uh, you hear it very early in the game. Now it plays on all sorts of other planets and moons when you land. And again, it sort of rotates different planets and moons, have like slightly different tracks. Again, one of the other five. Uh, but the point is, I don't really know what to call this. So I'm just going to call it like the Luna um, Exploration Track or something to that effect. Um, so anyway, here we go. And by the way, there's I looked on Wikipedia and you know some other places. There's I don't see any composer listed for the game. So if there's a specific composer beyond Fred Ford and Paul Reich, I'm not aware of it. So 
I'm just going to list this as, you know, their composition. I could be wrong. If I am, I'll fix it um, and change the information later. But at long last, here we go. This is from Star Control 2. Uh, and it's a track that is played when you're searching the moon in uh, Sol's uh, planetary system, or solar system, as well as many other planets and moons throughout the game. <laughs> soundtrack at the beginning it does like all of the planetary exploration or in orbit tracks um, back to back to back and that's an mp3 of the full soundtrack but it's not subdivided it's just like a you know hour long like hour and ten minute um, uh, file so yeah bottom line again when I was playing this game I was already interested because if you watch the intro it gives you a quick sort of background on what happened in the first game and you know earth is under the the control in the thrall of this um, brutal species that enslaves um, and again they end up fighting the civil war against a species that is related to them and basically says no you don't enslave species because then eventually they're going to rebel and whatever which is what you do in the game <clears throat> and they argue you just have to kill everybody like that's the only way to live so they you know they fight a civil war and the species that enslaves earth at the end of the first game they end up losing and then they're this other like cousin species which is just you know, kill everyone, and that's the way you survive, they start killing everybody. So, um, again, there's, like, all sorts of dramatic stuff happening in the game, and they set the table with that at the beginning, because when you you are in this, like, alien spaceship, which is built at the end of the first game, um, and you, like, are trying to get back to Earth to figure out what happened, because, like, you don't know, you, the captain of the ship, don't know that Earth is actually now enslaved. And on your way back, you encounter this, like, drone that's like, oh, who the hell are you trying to, like, approach Earth? Okay, well, I'm going to go tell my bosses, so whatever. And it's, like, it's this really dramatic scene. So I was already, like, really entranced by, like, oh, wow, there's, like, you know, there's a cool world that this game's already building in the first couple minutes. And then you have to, like, go to the moon, and it plays this track. And I remember just, like, sitting, like, not sending the lander down, just sitting in orbit for a couple minutes and listening to the tune, like, holy crap, like, this is so atmospheric. And that experience would continue throughout the game. So, um, yeah, it's a really cool game, really cool soundtrack. As I said, 
we'll go through this, we'll go through some of the precursor remixes. Um, yeah, trying to get back and do a little more video game music because it was a playlist that I neglected for like four or five months. So in any case, let me know what you think. I will see you next time. Peace.